Hi everyone, this is Kel once again, 27th of June, Tuesday, MAO with Kel once again. Now, do you just realize that you're getting poorer the last few years, right? From 2020 to now, do you realize that you're paying more and more for your food? Well, there's a reason for that and you should know it's the word inflation. But is that the only problem that we're facing right now? Nope, there'll be more issue coming up. I'll tell you more in details. But before that is solved, disclaimer apply as usual and thank you, Ames, for the kind sponsorship. All right, so the thing is this, let's just talk about this right now in Singapore, all right? The thing is this, in Singapore, food prices is definitely going up itself. And don't you realize that it's getting more and more painful for your pocket? I'll show you a chart very soon. But before that, let's look at the US market. Now, the Nasdaq shed 1% on Monday as investors dump tax names to start the final week of June. And we all know that Tesla yesterday dropped by 6%. So what causes that as well, right? The main driver was actually because of the... Goldman Sachs downgrading Tesla, all right? I've been warning you guys about Tesla. I share you anything above 280. It's the time to sell on Tesla. I hope you get my message on that. And of course, uh, we can see now the Nasdaq is coming down because people are getting worried right now regarding about the interest rate hiking. Now, there is a high chance that we'll see a 25 basis point on July for FOMC meeting. And there's another chance to see another 25 basis point in September. All right, so that's the reason why there are a lot of downgrades ongoing right now. And of course, we have a big bull run for the NASDAQ from the bottom up by 36%. So that's the reason why people are feeling that it's a good time to take some profit off the table, especially towards the FOMC meeting. And also do take note, next following week itself will be the 4th of July, the Independence Day. All right, so put that away. Let's talk about the food prices in Singapore. You can see that this is a 2021 and 2022 grocery prices. Now you can see that the fresh egg has went up from 465 to 650 on average prices. And of course, this is coming from Chinese News Asia, so it definitely can be trustworthy. And of course, that tomato up from 185 to $2. And of course, something went lower, like Fuji Apple went down lower, but uh, David Orange went down lower. But of course, the remaining a carrot, watercress, all went up. Okay. Coming to the main thing now is this the, the problem right now. You can see, we can see that our food prices, like, you know, for usually our noodle price from four, $3.50, now it's $4 on average. Some in charge at $4.50. All right. So yet the qualifying number says that the numbers is up by only 3.87%. <laughs> Basically, I don't buy that. So what this is a general aspect of it. So if the food prices keep on going higher, right, then what's the problem here? Well, there is an issue. But the thing is this, look at the companies right now like Tesla, they are actually cutting down their prices and that causes shared price to go up, right? But the thing is this, if they do that, right, the, the earnings revenue will go down. That's definitely for sure. And if you say the spare part prices still retain expensive, what do you think will happen in the near term? So that's the reason why you can see now, even Goldman Sachs coming in that they are feeling that this, uh, the pricing environment is getting difficult. And of course, based on that itself, right, they have revised the price towards the downside. So still, there are people looking at 335, but some are looking at even lower than by 197. So with that, that confirms that, right, the inflation issue itself is hurting people and that's bringing the earnings lower. And of course, if that continue, things can get pretty bad for all of us. So remember three years ago, we have the COVID virus that hit the whole world, right? And of course, in order to save the day, the central bank around the whole world pumped loads and loads of money, trillions of dollars to save the day. But when you do that as well, right, it will actually bring in inflation. And of course, inflation now is a big problem. And for like ECB now, they still think that the inflation is still too high. There's a good chance that they have to hike more. And of course, the Bank of England have just hiked 50 basis points to combat inflation and so forth. Right, the only one that's holding back now is a bit of Federal Reserve. But I, I really think that in order to bring down to 2%, they will have to go much higher to maybe even 6%. So we can see right now, the inflation figures seemingly have came down, right? Yeah, it came down. It is not the core CPI. The core CPI is still at a high level. And of course, Jerome Powell still want to bring the inflation down to the 2% mark. So in order to do that, right, the only way out is to basically hike more. And we will hike interest rate, right? Then what will happen? Well, the cost will be more, more expensive for people. And then people start to spend lesser. And that's how you bring inflation down. But when you do that itself, right, we will see something change in our life. For example, now this is in US, right, from 2019, where the start of the coronavirus, and then now 2023, you can see right now, in terms of costing, okay, has uh, three thousand dollars per month for goods and services now on average up by 510 going at three five hundred per month 
And of course, you look at it right now in 2019 all the way to 2024, we're expecting the number to keep on climbing. In fact, there are economists are saying that, right, this number will go to 3,947 by 2026, because this is not going to come down at all. So what do you think? Let me know in the comment box, okay? So if this earnings, uh, this cost is expanding out fast and your, your salary is able to compensate it, that's not too bad. But what if the corporate bankruptcy is coming in? What if the defaults are surging? Then what will happen? Imagine if you lose your job right now. Oh my goodness. Apparently through 20, uh, June 22, June, <clears throat> through June 2022 until now, there are 324 bankruptcy falling, not far behind the 374 in 2022. And of course, this is from the S&P Global Market Intelligence, and there are more bankruptcy falling this year itself. All right, so that is the highest rate since 2010. And 2010 was whereby the post of the Lehman crisis, all right? So all these speak for itself. If more people are getting some bankrupted, more companies is basically defaulting, lesser job will be available. That's the reason why you can see recently the unemployment data is starting to creep up because the pain is actually coming in. So now the thing is this, the Fed has keep have been increasing interest rate to really combat inflation, but it's still very far from where they are. But the thing is this, if this will continue, right, you understand now the debt to payment, the interest payable is going to climb and climb and climb because there will be interest need to be paying to the big companies for the lending them to you. And if their earnings is not there, think about this, this is going to be bad. And of course, if let's say now the demands to decrease, then supply overwhelm demand, that will lead to a potential deflationary situation. So very simple like Freddie Mac, okay? They have just released the result of the primary mortgage market survey of the 30 years fixed rate mortgage, which is 3.13 back then in 2020. But today right now, oh my goodness, this number has such a 6.69. That's double of what happened in 2020. So which means that you're paying more interest for whatever you have taken loan for. And think about this, would it be bad? If it's, would it be worse if I say the Federal Reserve continue to rate high? This is going to get really, really out of hand. So think about this right now. The inflation has caused the mortgage payment to increase significantly. So imagine now, the current back then is in 2020 to 2023 right now, you need to increase the, your mortgage payment by at least $1,260 for 425000 mortgage. So imagine that this number is really probably like one third of your salary. This is going to be absurd, right? So we all know that US averted the historical default by basically lifting debt ceiling. But do you think that the debt ceiling lifting up will help? No, it won't. It just basically pushed US into the bring of default. Because now the thing is this, when you start to have the debt ceiling being removed, right? Obviously, there are some talks over there. And now, apparently, they're saying that now they are looking to tighten and add work requirement for able-bodied adults. And that is going to include the stopping of other stuff. Example, they're going to stop the uh, student loan. And of course, they also, they're also going to restart this thing again, the, the suspension of it. And also, the all the unspent COVID relief fund will be clawed back in the deal. So that means that the society will get lesser, lesser, and lesser. And of course, if really the companies have to raise the fault and the benefits for people is getting lesser, this is going to really hurt the economy. So right now, our the saving rate is at a ridiculous low level. Recently, there are some, some keeping up because the interest rate is high, but still compared to the highest point back then in Lehman Brothers, I mean, during the COVID-19, because there a lot of money was giving in, free money, helicopter money is going in, but now they spend almost everything itself. This can really turn disastrous. And of course, at the moment, the scat is the whipsaw, the bull whipsaw, because in 1970s, we saw inflation actually shot up to 6%. And then it pulled back because there was some interest rate um, hiking. Then after that, because of that, the market gone crazy. They lose of it and inflation shot up all the way to 10%. So it is very possible that we may have a pullback now. But if let's say the Federal Reserve decided that enough, enough, we cannot hide rate further. We need to deflate. Then of course, that will push the inflation even higher because why? Because then the US dollar starts to depreciate in value and a lot of things is different on, depend on US dollar that will actually push inflation even higher. So again, this is going to be a pretty, pretty nasty situation. Yeah. And of course, right now, the current, based on the game of trades, the current drawdown rate, the, the post-pandemic of excess 
uh, saving is now at the low end and by 2023 September is expected that it may go to the negative zone. Oh my goodness. All right, this is basically from uh, many, many good reporters from the market. And of course, right now, the industrial production is really at a flat level, meaning that if this is at a flat level, what do you expect the market to do, right? You don't expect the market to perform any better. So now the advanced retail sales has also dropped dramatically. Now it was at mini 45, 46 period back in 2021, but now it's back to near the zero area. So that means that people are not spending. And if people are not spending, right, that what will happen? That means the economy is actually suffering at the moment right now. And of course, the weaker uh, labor job has already shown very clearly that it's at the lower end, but very soon we may see an uptick. And when that all happens, this can be a very, very serious problem for the entire global market. Yeah. So that's the reason why now you can see that the volatility index has dipped below 12. I did share with you guys to buy some at 12. Hopefully you heard me. So the last time we see something of sort is that when it was here back in 2020 and the Dow Jones was trading about 30, 30, about 30 nearly to about 29,000. And of course, that was where we keep on reminding people to get out of the market and the market plunged all the way down to 18,000. Now, of course, will this ever happen again? I don't think so. But again, every time when there's a low base on the fix, we can see that there will be some pullback on the US market. So right now, what we are seeing is that we have a base out in the in, in the in this, in the VIX, but the stock market ain't really performing the way we're expecting. So if you ask me, most likely we will see the market coming down all the way here, and that will give you about 33,000. Sorry, let me take a look here. About 32,000, yeah, 32,500 level. Because where we are right now, we are trading at about, uh, where are we? Okay, I think it wasn't really presented. Okay, let me just. Uh, okay, never mind. We are now at 33,714. So, which means that we're talking about 1,200 points drop from where we are right now. Do you think it's possible? Well, anything's possible because now the Goldman Sachs derivative guru, Brian, he found something very interesting. He has held, long held that the lower equity market yields higher than the implied volatility. VIX, okay? And high equity market yields, lower implied volatility. So at the moment now, you can see that there is a divergence of that. And the thing is this, this stuff is something not seen before. So if the market do pull back to where the VIX is right now, then it has to go down all the way to 4,300 in the near term. All right, so we need to do that if we really want to ensure things go nice for everybody. All right, and of course, with that understanding, we can look at the next chart itself. This is the uh, chart of the day whereby the 10 day rolling, okay, 10 day rolling between the SP, the SPX spot, and the VIX spot itself. You can see at the highest level. The last time we see something so similar was back in Lehman Brothers' time. And of course, the next one was back in 2024. I think that was something that happened on that period of time. Cannot remember that. If you can let me know, okay? So now we're actually at the highest level and pretty sure we can be able to expect a market pullback in the near term if the market decides to do that. Yeah, So traders, you need to watch out for this because this is really, really unhealthy sign for a bull market. And of course, look at the Dow Jones conventional. You can see right now it has stopped exactly where I said. So likelihood, it may have to come down all the way to about 32,950 area. All right, today we close at 33,714, so it's about less than 1,000 points. I think that should be able to reach, okay? So watch out for that, traders. Okay, that is the Dow conventional, but if you look at the TWB chart, that's expressed something different. Now, the TWB chart itself, right, basically has a KSI turning red right now, and that means that the sellers are coming in. Now, the MA30 is at 33,814, so which means that as long as the market stays below MLP, you should be safe. Oh, sorry. The MLP is 33,763, just happened. The MA30 was 33,814. Uh, 33, so today is a doji directional day. Oh gosh, that means that if the market initially push up first, the second half of the day, there might be some selling. So vice versa, if the market is actually showing that a lot of problems in the morning, then the afternoon evening may turn around, okay? So with the KSI turning red right now, I think one should be careful, should book some profit along the way. Now, if the market breaks OP, then hell will break loose. Then selling could bring it down all the way to 33,391. And that will be the level that we just said also early on. All right. But at the moment now, the indicators are still pretty, pretty bullish at the moment. So we just have to wait for a while. But remember, 
once the market breaks below the um, MLP at the 3,763, or no, in fact, it's trading lower now. If the market goes below at 700, I think the selling wave towards the 3,391 is going to be very, very strong. Okay, so traders do watch out for all this information. I'll tell you more in details. This is Carol signing off. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.